go to zandronum.com and download the latest version. At time of recording, that is 3.0. Once it's finished downloading, open up the installer.exe. If you get this alert from Windows, just hit yes. Click portable installation. And for me, I'm going to create a new folder on my desktop. Make sure that directory is correct. I mean, this doesn't have to be the same for you. You can put it wherever you want, but you want to put it somewhere where you're probably not going to move it. For me, for now, that's just on my desktop. Once that's done extracting, open up the newly created Zandronum folder, drag and drop your Doom and Doom 2 wads into the directory, and open up zandronum.exe. Before you hit play, make sure you select Hardware OpenGL and uncheck full screen. Really quick, just for the sake of the video, I'm going to load into a level and turn sounds all the way off. Okay, so once Sandronum is open, go into Options, Set Video Display. Second option from the top is Aspect Ratio. Select the aspect ratio for your monitor. In my case, I'm running a 1080p monitor, so I'll select 16 by 9 and then just mouse down until I hit 1920 by 1080. Select that and then go back up to full screen and select yes. While you're in here, make sure your renderer says OpenGL. Back out to the main options menu and to start we'll customize controls. To delete these really quick I'm just hitting the down arrow on my keyboard and selecting backspace. Once you're done down to strafe, go back up to the top and the only keys you re need to rebind are fire, secondary fire, weapon reload, use open, move forward, backward, strafe left and right, jump, crouch, and run. It's personal preference, I also like to swap my weapon wheel for next and previous weapon. Back to the options menu, under mouse options, I like to change my cursor to system cursor. I have a high DPI mouse, so I change my overall sensitivity as low as it can go to 0.5, and make sure always mouse look is on. Back into options and in player setup, change your player name. It's a good idea to change your color as well. Um, auto aim, select never. Handicap, make sure that's all the way down. Always run should be on. And in weapon setup, I like to turn switch on pickup to never. Back into the options menu, down to HUD options. Now, uh, I like to turn the alternative HUD on. If you're not uh, if you're not into that, if you like the default HUD, go into message options, text scaling, enable text scaling on, and use screen ratio to yes. But like I said, I prefer the alternative HUD, especially in multiplayer, so I turn that on and use that. Back into the options menu, down to display options now. Uh, vertical sync you want to leave off unless you experience screen tearing. If you do, turn that on. should fix it. Down to lost soul translucency, turn that up to 1.0. Rocket trails, you want sprites and particles. Same with blood type and bullet puff type, you have to leave on sprites. Number of particles, uh, you can leave default at 4,000. If you notice FPS issues in firefights or if there's lots of blood and stuff on the walls, try turning that down. Should fix any issues you might have there. Uh, back up to the top in OpenGL options and dynamic light options, just make sure everything is set to yes. Light intensity and light size can be left on 1.0. Use shaders for lights, also yes back into OpenGL options and into texture options. Textures enabled, yes. Texture filter mode, none. Anisotropic filter, turn to 16x. Texture format, RGB A8. Enable high res textures, yes. High quality resize mode. I use HQ4x, that's as high as it goes. Um, if you don't have a very good computer system, you might want to turn that down a little bit depending on how well your FPS is doing. Any one of the HQ settings really works. They all look fine. I use four. That's up to you. 
textures, sprites, and font resize should all be on. Precast GL textures, yes. Camera textures off screen on, and trim sprite edges on. Back into OpenGL options and into preferences. Uh, sector light mode, dark is fine. I prefer software. If you find software is too dark, you can switch to standard. In standard, uh, fog mode has an effect. Uh, I like to use radial when I do use standard for some mods that are too dark. And uh, if that's still too dark for you, try bright. For now, I'm just going to leave that on software. Down to enhanced night vision mode, turn that off. Uh, just sprite clipping, switch to smarter. Smooth sprite edges on. Fuzz style, this is personal preference, but I like smooth noise. And rendering quality to quality. And that's really all you need to do to configure Xandronum. So once you've done that, we can quit Xandronum and go into the Doomseeker directory. In this directory, we want to create a new folder and we're going to call it WADS. I'll explain why in just a moment. Open up Doomseeker. Uh, in your first startup, you should get this little, uh, little alert. If not, you can hit F5 or go to Options Configure. But uh, first, we're going to download and install the latest update. Restart and install once that's finished downloading. All right. Now that we've updated Doomseeker, go into Options, Configure. Under Games, click Xandronum and make sure the directory is in the right place. And like I said, I put it on my desktop, so that's all good. Then under File Paths, we're going to click Add and add that WAD folder that we created in our Doomseeker folder. Select that folder and make sure to hit Apply. Once you've hit Apply, under the WAD Seeker menu, select General, and from the drop-down menu there, select that WAD folder again. Now what this does is, whenever you connect to a server through Doomseeker that is using WADs that you don't have, WAD Seeker will try and automatically download them from any one of these sources. And normally those would go into a folder in your app data folder, which is kind of a pain in the ass to find, and it's a little bit of a pain to delete the wads from that folder as well. So when we connect to a server that has wads that we don't have, just using this one as an example, you can see wad seeker is automatically attempting to download the wads that I don't have, and it will put them in this wad folder. Makes them really easy to take care of and delete old wads as necessary. Because this folder can get pretty big. And on my, my personal wad folder right now, just from connecting to random servers, is about 2 gigs. A lot of people don't have that kind of space. But uh, yeah, once you're done that, I mean, you're pretty much done here. Uh, you can play Doom Online with friends or whoever you want. Strangers on the internet. And, uh, and you're good. Yep, that's, that's it. Uh... Yeah. Are you happy? Is that good? We're good? Alright. See you in hell.